Good morning, guys. Um, I'm going to talk more about this in class, but I, I want to lay out the, the 1040 tax form. You're just going to create one real fast. It's, uh, it's very simple. I'm going to give you a couple of days if you want. Um, I want to give you some ideas of, of why certain things are important. Um, on the top of the 1040, you'll pull up the PDF and you'll fill it in yourself. If you need to take a screenshot or just give me a, a, an answer as to what the refund or, or, or the balance due might be with the sample W-2 I've, I've provided for you guys, that's okay too. Um, here's the deal. The first thing you see on the very top of the form, right underneath where it says 1040, is filing status. Filing status is very important. You need to tell the government whether you're filing as a, a single person and... That just means you're not married um, and not married at the end of the year. There are super duper rules that, that go into this. Um, I'm not going to go through all that stuff. Uh, married filing uh, joint, of course. A married couple files together. They put their incomes together. Um, they're supporting a bigger household. Therefore, they get a, 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 a little bit different uh, uh, tax percentage of tax maybe um, and then there's married filing separate which means you're a married couple but you don't want to file together as, as a couple um, there are very few advantages to that mostly it's you're going to be penalized a little bit for that but if there's a situation where you're not living together and you don't want to share any information of your income uh, then okay you can file a separate return it doesn't doesn't really hurt you too much in, in certain instances, but it hurts you a lot when we talk about kids and credits, and, and that's uh, a difficult thing with the separate status. Uh, head of household is uh, a, a person who can be considered single for filing purposes, and um, they have dependents, um, most likely children. Um, I could go into dependence a lot, and it takes a long time to talk about. Um, I'm not going to do it in this video. Uh, and then the last uh, is a qualifying widow or widower, means uh, your, uh, your spouse died uh, in a prior year, and uh, you are still taking care of a dependent. So you get an, an extra couple of years of filing, basically as a married couple for, for a couple years after the death of a spouse to help you catch up, to help you get back into the swing of things. Unfortunately, you'll go back to, you'll go to being head of household if you still have those dependents at home um, after the passing of a loved one. The next, uh, the next section is all about your personal information. Now the personal information, it doesn't seem like anything, right? You just, you're just putting your name and your, your, your numbers and your address, and that's basically it, right? Um, it's dreadfully important, especially in a time like this. Everybody knows, I know you all know, because you've either seen it on the news, probably not watching the news, but um, you've heard people talking about this stimulus payment that every family is supposed to get unless they make a certain amount of money and then they don't get it. Well, I get calls all the time. Where's my stimulus payment? What's What's going on with my stimulus payment? It didn't go into my bank account. What happened? Um, well, what happens is if, if the IRS has, has a certain bank account that you used to get your refund direct deposit into, and they try and send money there, but that bank account is closed, now that personal information is super duper important because they need to know your, uh, your name and your address and that check once the IRS gets that money bounced back at them, they're going to issue you a check for that amount of money. So um, the IRS needs to know where you live. Besides the fact that they're going to send you lots and lots of mail if you've decided to cheat on your taxes. Um, I'm not going to worry about the, the standard deduction piece. And, and if you want to uh, add $3 to the general election fund, um, underneath that is dependents. Uh, uh, we're going to assume that you're not being a claim, not being claimed by anyone. We're going to assume that you just have, just have wage income. You're going to do a simple run right through this thing. 
All right, so the next thing you need to do is look at that W-2 and put that information on line one because that'll be your wages. So line one will be your wages and that those wages in box one for the federal are 48,500. You don't need to do anything. And if it's not a round number like this, you're gonna round if it has cents. A lot of the times it'll have cents um, on it and you'll just round to the nearest whole dollar. Um, you're going to skip all the rest of the, the, the lines between that and um, uh, line 8A. Uh, line 8A says uh, your adjusted gross income, your AGI. You guys who are techno savvy are going to do your uh, going to do your tax returns. Online, you're going to use TurboTax, you're going to use hrblock.com, you're going to use any other type of software or, or program to file your tax return. Well, if you do that and you're doing it on your own, you're going to have to know what an AGI is. And your AGI is your adjusted gross income. And it tells you right there what your adjusted gross income is. It's, it's all of that income before adjustments right or or adjust uh, adjustments to income uh, which is line 8a and there are a couple uh, you know just student loan interest deduction uh, educator expenses other things like that that come off the top um, not a whole lot of them so what you do is you take all that information your wage information interest pensions dividends, anything else that's income, you add it up all in here and all the schedules that get completed to add into income and that's schedule one. Um, now, you get to add them all up and on 8B, you're gonna write 48,500. That's, that's how it looks on, uh, that looks like more like an 86, huh? 8B. Um, and that's what it looks like for now, for us, we have $48,500 worth of income. And then right, right underneath it is, is line nine, and that's the standard deduction. And every single taxpayer, um, and what I mean is every taxpayer who's filing is single, gets uh, $12,200 as a standard deduction. It's basically what the the Treasury Department or the IRS uh, assumes that cost of living is uh, is going to be for you know the, the cost of staying alive. All right, so we're going to subtract. So line nine is going to be twelve thousand two hundred dollars. That's the number for for two thousand nineteen. Um, it goes up uh, two hundred dollars, basically two hundred dollars a year, maybe one hundred and fifty depending on cost of living increase. All right, so there we go, $12,200. And what happens is right after that is, hey, um, if you have any, if you own a business, there's QBID, there's, there's qualified business income deduction, and there's another deduction that you can take on top of that. But after that, you get to um, take that off and on line uh, line 11B, sorry, line 11B is your taxable income. So we'll do some subtraction here. And so you're being taxed on $36,300, which is pretty good because, you know, you've already taken off a decent portion of your income. You know, you basically... You know, you started at 48, now you're down to 36. If we're, we're talking in terms of, of 12, so you just cut your income by a quarter. If you only made $48,000, you cut your income by a quarter. And so you're only paying on 75% of the money that you made that's, that the IRS wants to look at as your income. Um, the next thing you're going to do is go to the tax table. And I've I've posted the tax table. I've, I've given you... A, uh, a link for the fillable PDF and basically 
and the reason I made a link is because when I tried to copy it to uh, the site, it wouldn't work. So use the link to fill out a fillable PDF, take a screenshot, and upload it to me. Um, here's 36300 and we're going to go to the tax table and find the tax. And if I'm not mistaken, the tax is on page 8. If I'm not mistaken, I lied. It's page 7 of the tax table. And if you look in the box, and I love the fact that it's sitting at $36,300. That's, that's one of those magic spots right there. Because uh, on the tax table itself, it's, you know, it says at least... Um, I'm going to take a look at it because I want to make sure. But less than, all right? At least, but less than. All right? And then it's got lists of numbers, and you go down the chart, right? And you get to the chart, and you look up $36,300, and that's where it ends on one section before the tax goes up. But if you read it, it says at least but less than. So the section right above it, I'm going to look for it right now. So it goes in $50 increments. So we have $36,250 to $36,300. There's a tax of... $41.59. $4,159. Right? But then we go 36, 3, 2, 36, 350. Since we go in increments and we have 41.65. Right? So 4,165. Now, because we're sitting right on that number. It's at least $36,300 and less than $36,350. Now, if you use this number, the IRS would send you a bill for a whopping $6. Would they do that? No. They would just make the correction on their own, and your refund would go down $6. Not a big deal. They, they are more than happy to make a, a simple correction like that, um, but they'll still waste money on a letter. Because they have to tell you every time they do something um, to your tax return that's not on the form itself. Okay, so if they hold your refund because you have prior debt somewhere else, or if you have prior debt with the IRS and they're holding your refund, um, they send out a letter saying, this is where your refund went. Don't come crying to us. Here's where it went. Um, go cry to them. Or you can call us and we'll tell you exactly what we just mailed to you and have a great time. All right, so we found this number. We know it's this number because $36,300. Um, we didn't use this number because it's not less than this number. We had to use this number. So we step up. All right, so our tax, and I'm going to go back here. That's the very next line. Line 12 is your tax, uh, 4165 and that's the second page of, of the wonderful PDF of the 1040. I'm trying to move it now, and it's deciding not to move. I hate my computer right now. It's really killing this video. All right, so there's your tax. You just take it from the tax table. Don't worry about the other parts that are on there. And then uh, don't worry about any of the credits that are showing up there. All you want to do is go to the line that says that's line 17, um, federal withholding. All right, federal withholding is on your W 2, it's box 2, and in that instance, it says um, 68.35. All right, now look, here's your tax, here's what was withheld from your paycheck. Hey, dude, you're withholding way too much, but maybe you use this, uh, use the government as a savings plan. You want to go on a, a quick vacation. You're a single guy. Um, you know, $2,700 is going to go a long way to a, a, a weekend somewhere 
you can uh, go almost anywhere for a weekend for $2,700, right? So you're gonna find the difference between these two things, and I'm gonna do it here, right? Woo! And that's a zero. That's a seven. That's a six. That's a two. So twenty six seventy is a refund, and that's you know you you do the math and you find the the difference, um, and that goes on line twenty. Okay, so you do repeat this number, this sixty eight thirty five, on line nineteen because you add all your your uh, your payments together. Um, but this is really very much what it is, and I'm going to go through this again uh, during our class. But this guy ends up getting a 2670, 2670 as a refund, um, and that's basically it. It seems it's a little more complicated because there are other rules and stuff that goes with it. But you know, if you're using uh, some somebody's software. Very simple, but I don't want you guys paying money to use software. I want you guys to do it for free because your W-2s are very much like this. Nothing huge and heavy yet. You don't have a lot of interest. And remember, when you guys do your tax returns for 2019, you are dependents. No matter what you say, you're dependents. You can't claim yourself. There's no such thing as an education credit for you. Don't start playing that game. Even when you're in college, don't play that game. Your parents are still going to claim you while you're in college. You can make sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year, and and still be claimed. Okay, don't mess with it. Don't claim yourself. Um, and and that's about it. Okay, and I'll I'll get back to you this afternoon.